On this Memorial Day, Park University and the George S. Robb Center for the Study of the Great War commemorate those who have given the ultimate sacrifice while in service to our nation. Our traditions and practices of this day have seldom changed since the Civil War. The first national observance followed a request by Union General John A. Logan's on May 30, 1868, quote, If other eyes grow dull, other hands slack, and other hearts cold in the solemn trust, our shall keep it well as long as the light and warmth of life remain to us. Let us raise above them the dear old flag they saved from dishonor. Though various celebrations of similar nature occurred in the North and South as early as 1863, the events quickly grew in popularity and combined many private, city, and state-level ceremonies. Well into the turn of the 20th century, Memorial Day established itself as an event of solidarity between generations of veterans, their families, friends, and communities. By 1921, Congress had approved legislation for the disinternment and reburial of an unidentified World War I American service member into Arlington National Cemetery. The purpose was to hold an atonement for the collective to witness, to allow all to grieve, and to represent every service member who had fallen. It was then, on Memorial Day Monday, May 30th, 1921, that four American service members were exhumed from the Meuse Argon, Ain Main, Saint Mihiel, and Somme cemeteries in France and moved to the Chalon in Champagne City Hall. Sergeant Edward F. Younger, U.S. Army, then selected one of the caskets to return to the United States for burial at the Memorial Amphitheater on November 11, 1921. Further unknowns would follow. In 1956, President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed Public Laws 79-429 and 84-975, allowing for the burial of unknown American service members from World War II and the Korean conflict at the Memorial Amphitheater. In May of 1958, selection from one of the four disinterned unknown service members of the Korean conflict held in the National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific commenced. Master Sergeant Ned Lyle, U.S. Army, performed the selection. The Korean conflict's unknown was then united with two awaiting selections of the unknown for World War II between one from the Pacific Theater and one from the European Theater. The ceremony was performed aboard the USS Canberra by Navy Hospital Corpsman 1C William R. Sherritt. On Friday, May 30th, 1958, the World War II and Korean conflict unknowns were removed from the Capitol Rotunda where they had laid in state since their arrival in Washington, D.C. on May 28th. In traveling to the Memorial Amphitheater, the World War II unknown was brought through the south entrance, with the Korean conflict unknown through the north. The two were then buried, flanked on either side of the World War I unknown. The fourth and final unknown soldier from the Vietnam War was designated on May 17, 1984, by Sergeant Major Alan J. Kellogg Jr., U.S. Marine Corps, as they were the only remains that had not yet been identified. On Memorial Day, Monday, May 28, 1984, the Vietnam War unknown was transported to the Memorial Amphitheater for burial next to his military brethren. On May 14, 1998, the Department of Defense exhumed the remains and positively identified them as belonging to First Lieutenant Michael Joseph Blasey, U.S. Air Force, who had been shot down during the Battle of An Lok, South Vietnam, in April 1972. The remains were then disinterred and were buried at Jefferson Barracks National Cemetery in St. Louis County, Missouri. The unknowns of World War I, World War II, the Korean conflict, and now empty Vietnam War remain one of our nation's most significant displays of remembrance, reverence, and respect. Alongside our personal displays of commemoration, the shared memory of those lost have created tributes that stand the test of time. Upon this Memorial Day, Park University 
and the George S. Robb Center honor those who lost their lives in service to our country.